Fiber friends, welcome to another episode of the Witch and Knitting Mama. We're now calling it a knit cast instead of a podcast. So I'm Nicole. You can find me on Instagram as Witchin underscore knitting underscore mama or on Ravelry as Sea Turtle Girl G R R L, not G I R L. Welcome from the rural part of North Carolina where I live with my husband, the handsome devil, and my two little children, the goblins. And we also have two little hellhounds. So it is the end of February. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I am so sorry for the delay in getting back to you guys with a new episode. Um, things here have been crazy. Corbin got sick. Corbin is one of my youngest goblin. He's my youngest goblin. And um, he gave it to me. Of course he did because I have the immune system of a flea. And I got very sick. Very, very sick. I'm still dealing with the um, kind of upper respiratory sinus infection-y type stuff. So, <clears throat> we're dealing with that. Had my birthday. Had a very busy birthday. So, um, a lot of knitting, but no finished objects. Today is not about finished objects. Today is all about the whips. Um, so, with that, I'm just going to go ahead and jump right in it. Um, and I'm going to leave the big whip for last. So, I did work some on my kit sock. <clears throat> well, it's stuck. Uh-oh. Okay. This is... Ta-da! Progress. And I need to move my marker so that I can show you guys when I'm making progress. This is my 4th of July Bomb Pop stitch marker from the Littlest Charm Co. I love it. It's so cute. But this is the... Just a minute. Tube Socks for Kids by Jane Richmond. It's, uh, I believe, a free pattern on Ravelry. It's super easy. <clears throat> Um, I've just been knitting on it when I have time. It's a, it's vanilla, just a tube, toe up, uh, super great. Uh, as soon as I finish my big, my big project that I'm working on, I'm going to get back to this. It is living in a slick chick bag that I got from Amber over at Ambie Marie Knits for my birthday. She sent me a beautifully curated box with some yarn and some goodies. And I love this. Look at that. I look slick chick. Slip chick bags down below. Try and say that 10 times fast. So that's whip number one. Number two. I'm gonna bust out the snake. Okay, so I did finish. I think we left off at the second second book. I did just finish book number three, which is on my book. A Witch's Guide to Fake Dating a Demon by Sarah Hawley. I gave it two stars out of five on Goodreads because it felt like smut for the sake of smut. It, there wasn't, there's a storyline, but it, I don't know. It was not very good. It wasn't my cup of tea. So the book cover is light yellow with like the, the witch has like a purple dress and the demon has like a black pair of pants and like a gray colored shirt, but I was going for the light, light yellow. So this will be our next band. I've got to do five rows of black and then the yellow. So that's been living in my Spring Ghosties back by um, Happy Little Yarn. Go check her out. She's got some fantastic bags. I love her bags. I gotta get some more large bags from her because they're perfect. They're 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 great size for your sweater projects, blanket projects. I love her her large size. So, ta da! There's that one. Um, my second Avenue sweatshirt by uh, Rihanna Lupino who is the Little Wolf Knits. I was trucking, trucking, trucking right along on this and making such good progress and then this test net came up. So look at that. It's kind of hard to see. So I've got about five inches in the body, maybe? Yeah. And what I'm doing with this one is I'm holding one strand of Cascade Heritage in black along with one strand of a fingering mini that I have. I have so many blue minis that I've been needing to work up. So I've just been marling them into this. So this is the back and you can see there's one here, one here. This is one, this is one, this is one. And then I just got to a new one, but you can't really see it yet. Um, I'm loving this pattern. It's great. It's super easy. I like Brianna's patterns, um, especially if you're new to like short rows or short row shaping in the back. Very easy, great instructions on how to do those short rows. So, 
um, I'm really enjoying this um because it was you know it's just running around and around knitting and just going through it as you do um I'm trying to remember so far I used three minis in January and then I just finished the second mini for February so we're five minis total <clears throat> for this sweater and I think I just started number six so I mean that's pretty good for mini busting I think but yeah so I've had a lot of really positive feedback when I've posted pictures of it that people really like it um honestly I'm not too concerned about the color the blocking I think once you get it on it's not going to matter especially when you have sleeves and they start going down but I really like this I kind of wish I had thought of this sooner because I think this will be a great, a great um, winter knitwear. So yeah, I can't wait to pick that back up again. <clears throat> so that lives in one of my Heather handbag. Oh, look at all the dog hair on it. That's the joys of owning two huskies. Dog hair everywhere. <laughs> so yeah. Um, oh, I'm almost done with the first ball of Heritage. What, what? And then this is, this is what I have left of the current ball I'm working on. So yeah, that's the second Avenue sweater, sweatshirt. Um, and then the big project, y'all ready for this? Jamie over at uh, Pacific Nitco, who's our doodle queen extraordinaire. Um, she put out a testing call for her newest doodle charts and they are a baking chart um when I originally saw this my, my ADHD just went next level crazy I saw this and I was like this is so cool so she has cupcakes in the in the chart section in the chart set not the chart section so what I did was I used just one chart I used just the cupcakes so what I did was I sat down and I thought of every different flavored cupcake and how cool it would be to translate those different flavored cupcakes into yarn. And so I have all these minis and all these scraps that I need to go through. Why not just use those? Did my measurements, found out how many grams I needed for one section. So each main color, there's three main colors. There's a blue, yellow, and then the coral. And then I measured out how many fingering like I was using my fingering minis held double how many grams I would need to do the base and then the frosting so using those numbers I put them into Ravelry so that people can have them when the charts release you can use them um it's totally fine I'm willing to share the knowledge um but that's how I was able to come up with the flavors I did man I came up with like 15 different combinations it was crazy so it's been so much fun finding minis in my stash to make this. So we have so far lemon with lemon frosting, strawberry with strawberry frosting, chocolate cake with coconut frosting. You can kind of see the, the, there are some little blips in the coconut. This is actually pina colada from Mesa Skeins. I thought that was perfect. It's got little blips of brown and red and yellow, so it was perfect for coconut. This one is red velvet with cream cheese frosting. Then we have our very yummy chocolate cake with chocolate frosting. Shout out to my Zoom knit friends who helped me with this one because let me tell you, when you try and Google cake pictures, it's not helpful. <laughs> it's not, because which is darker, chocolate frosting or chocolate cake? I couldn't figure out which one's gonna be better for the base or better for the frosting these are the kind of decisions that you have to make if you decide to put flavors into yarn so we have funfetti and thank you to amber over at amber Marie knits for sending me this this mini i think it worked perfect for our funfetti and then we have pistachio with vanilla frosting and this is actually the green that i used is actually a dk tweed you can kind of see the little nips in there um, I don't know if I still have it in the back. If I have it in the bag, I'll show it to you. I don't have it in the bag. I'm sorry. This was actually a mini that I got in my stash vent box this year from Riley, who is Green Needle Knits. 
Um, so that works out perfectly. Pistachio! And then up here in my yellow, I've got blueberry. And I'm going to do blueberry icing on top. So lots of fun flavors. So many ideas. Um, I've got one more section of the coral. So there'll be yellow and then a coral. And then I'll graft it for an infinity cow. And I think the last flavor I'm going to do is probably a chocolate base with a mint colored top. Because I really wanted to do a mint chocolate cake. So I've got both. I'm um, so excited about them this finishing this and blocking it because I think once it blocks it's going to be amazing. I'm really excited about this. But yeah, look at me, look at that. It's gorgeous. It's definitely unconventional compared to some of the other other knits I've seen in the test group. Um, it's kind of hard being in a different mindset with the doodle rather than picking, you know, several different charts. And, and going the traditional route. I wanted to do something different and this is where my mind went. So haven't gotten any negative feedback on it, which is nice. So yeah, um, just shows that you can really do anything with Jamie's charts. You really can. The, the sky's the limit on them. Um, dog hair. What are you gonna do? So yeah. Okay, but yeah, hopefully next time I'm, I come back and talk to you guys, it will be finished and this will be a finished object because this has got to be done by Friday. And I believe that the new charts are releasing on March 8th. When they release, I will update the description down below and link you directly to the charts and the patterns for the doodle, for the baking doodle. Um, I'm gonna wrap here in my chair. So that's it for the whips. Um, I did, I don't have it with me. Is it behind me? It's not behind me. It is behind me. So I did pull out a long standing whip, um, which is my plushy planetarium by uh, Megan Regan of Bad Wolf Girl Studios. She did a set of planets that are little plushies. And you guys have seen these before if you've been a long time viewer. So here's Mars in Mercury. And the goblins and I were listening to Danny Go. I'll link him below. If you're a parent and you don't know Danny Go, let me help you out. You'll love it. So we were listening to Danny Go, and Danny Go has a song about planets. And it started me thinking, like, I really need to do these planets. They're easy, they're small, they're quick to knit up. So I was like, I really need to bring this whip out. And so I did. I brought it back out and I've got to um, go back through all the colors because like I think that was Pluto or Uranus. I'm not 100% sure. But I've got all of the minis in here. They were not part of the total that I gave back in January. So I've got to adjust my total um, to accommodate those and then we'll go, we'll go from there. But I think that this is definitely one that's going to be hopefully finished by the next time we talk. So, <clears throat> excuse me, but yes, I'm definitely excited about that. And then I think what I'm going to do is when I finish all the planets, and yes, I am doing it online, I may do the sun. I can't remember if she has schematics in the pattern for the sun or not. I may have to go back and look, but I'm going to get some plastic canvas. I'll spray paint it black and then I'll do um, fishing line tie the planets to it. I'll do like a, a long rectangle and that way I can hang the planets from the mesh and then I can mount the mesh from the ceiling and put it up hopefully in Corbin's room. Thank you Radar for knocking the camera over. Sorry about that. You're a good boy when you want to be. What would we do without them? So yeah, there's the planets. Why don't you put me down? Thank you. So that leads me to acquisitions. Oh Lord, this is off now. This is gonna drive me nuts. Okay, acquisitions. Um, a few acquisitions. I've honestly kept it pretty clean. Um, I do want to show you guys these things before I forget. Um, these are also the Littlest Charm Co. I don't really have an easy way to show these. 
There we go. I love her popsicles. They're so cute. So now I have a 4th of July, a Valentine's Day one, the watermelon, and St. Patrick's Day. I need to see if she's doing an Easter one. They're, I'm like obsessed with her popsicles. They're so cute. Um, so that was one acquisition. Another acquisition, um, Amber contributed to my, my stash. She gave me this beautiful skein. I, show me yarn, show me yarn. Um, I think that this is self-striping, but I'm not 100% sure. Amber, is this self-striping? Uh, this is boot heel base. It's a fingering weight in the color light bright. It's an 80-20 superwash merino nylon, 400 yards. And then Amber included the knitting needles so I can make myself socks. So these are definitely going to happen probably this summer. I think I want to do maybe a pair of shorties out of these because Handsome Devil got me a pair of low top Converse for my birthday. I love them. And now I want to make like all the shorty socks. So, <laughs> so I think these are destined to be socks. Um, I got two skeins of millions of peaches. Oh yeah. This shows up great. You can see the difference. It's definitely more, more pinky than orange. This is pretty twisted yarns. The lovely Teresa. She is the queen of neons. I'm telling you. This is on her lavish base, which is her 8515 extra fine merino nylon. It's 437 grams. 437 grams. 437 yards for 100 grams. This is going to be part of a rocket tee that I've had planned. Um, I would like to get this rocket tee done by Easter, but I think that's wishful thinking at this point. Easter is the end of the month next month. Easter's very early this year, so I will have to see. But this is going to go with this. It's my first time ever buying Rowan Kitzel K's. Um, I think that this was the smoke colorway. It's 605, whatever color that is. Um, it's not as soft as like Kimber's Surrey that I bought from Kimber, which is a great. <clears throat> and if this, this Surrey wasn't already earmarked for another project, I would have just used this, but pretty close in color. But this is special, so this is being used for a different project. But it, I don't think it's as soft as Kimber's yarn. Mm -mm. Mm. I need to look up the content on Kimber's and see if it's right. Um, I wish I could have found a Surrey instead of a mohair, but this is just what I'm working with. I've never used mohair like next to skin. I don't think this will bother me. Hmm. Okay, so... I think that these are going to go good together. <clears throat> I'm excited about that project. But that's it. Let me get a sip of coffee. And that's really it for yarn stuff right now. I know I just kind of blew right through it, but um, February has just been, it's been a busy month and I, I let it get away from me. Um, I've been re listening to audiobooks. I finished that one from um, Sarah Holly, Yeah, Sarah Holly. It was 11 hours, so it was kind of a slog after I realized what I had gotten myself into. Um, I started the Vampire Knitting Club yesterday after a couple people have recommended it to me. Um, I really wanted to read Legends and Lattes, but it is considered a premium access book on Spotify, so I can't get it yet. Whatever. I'm about halfway through The Dead Zone by Stephen King. Um, I'm enjoying that book. But because it's a hard copy, um, I only read it at night. The kids are too crazy for me to try and read during the day. So it's a good book. I really like it. Um, we're kind of getting where the two stories are kind of starting to, to merge together. And I love it when Stephen King does that because it's kind of like an aha moment. Um, watching been re-watching Wednesday, which I love. I forget how much I love that show. It's such a good show. I can't wait for the second season. I can't. Oh, I'm so, so ready for it. But other than that, not a lot of life. We got kindergarten registration happening um, for Atticus, who's my oldest goblin. And 
it's just crazy. It's a lot of anxiety and a lot of stress and a whole lot of crazy. <laughs> so I think on that note, I'm going to call it. Say hello to Clucky. She's back there hanging out. She's like the unofficial mascot now. I love her. I love everybody's emotional support chickens. If you're out there doing the emotional support chickens, they're fantastic. Come here, Clucky. Mm. So, all right. I think that's going to do it for us. Hope I'll get this up within the next day or so. Depends on how bad work is. So, we'll uh, see you next time. Bye.